How's it going everybody? Rob here, Creeping and Real. Wanted to do an overview on my West Poplin Carpet Python clutch this year. Uh, and this is actually the mom of that clutch. Not a horribly big snake, but she's about five years old. Uh, the West Poplins are one of the smaller types of carpet pythons. And so she is, you know, not that big. She's like maybe five foot long, but really beautiful. You can see those beautiful orange uh, flames kind of going up the sides on her. She does lighten up pretty well on the dorsal at nighttime, and she's just like a really beautiful West Poplin carpet python. And so this clutch is actually one that I did a little experiment with. Um, if you are in the gecko community, you'll know like leopard geckos and crested geckos. A lot of people do temperature manipulation in their incubation through the last little bit of the incubation process, and that actually manipulates the color of those animals. So you can take a clutch of leopard geckos, say you've got uh, two eggs in a clutch, you can incubate one egg at a steady constant temperature throughout the entire incubation process and then take the other egg and in the last week or so of incubation bump up your temperatures of the incubation of that egg and you'll notice a noticeable difference in coloration of those two geckos between the one that you uh, kind of had the control with where you didn't manipulate the temperature and the one that you did manipulate the temperature with. So I haven't really seen people do that or experiment with that with snakes so I decided to try it with this clutch here. So this is the mom of that clutch. I'll show you the guys, uh, the dad real quick here and then we'll take a look at the babies. So this is the dad, the sire of that clutch of West Poplin Carpet Pythons. If you look on his sides, you'll see he's a little bit more yellow, uh, not quite as orange as the female is. So I'm curious to see how that color influence plays on the offspring. He does have some really nice color in the sides right there. And then if you look at his tail, his tail is actually a lot lighter colored than her tail. So not exactly sure how that's going to play out for the babies, but I'm really curious to see. So now that we've got a chance to check out both the parents, let's check out those babies. Okay, so first we're going to take a look at the control group of animals that were incubated at a fairly steady 86 degrees throughout incubation. Uh, there was a couple days where it got a little warm in the middle but for the most part right around 86 degrees for incubation. So this one right here is kind of what I consider to be fairly standard look for the cooler end of incubation. So where is he hiding out at? Right here. So overall you're having a much kind of a darker colored animal. You can see that on top it's got kind of like a chocolatey kind of color to it. And then you can see the flames on the sides. Uh, that color that I'm expecting to see as they grow is not quite in yet on the sides but you can see the color saturation in there as far as the dark and the light tones. But overall a fairly dark colored animal. So that's one. So let's take a look at a couple others. Okay. This one right there. Okay. So look at this one right here. So this one is right there. So again, uh, kind of darker tones on the top. Overall a fairly dark colored animal. You can see the flames in the sides where that color will come in as it matures. But overall a fairly dark colored animal. The head has got some light coloration to it. But overall fairly dark. Cool. Boom. On to the next. Okay. So, this one seems to have some lighter tones to it compared to the others. Still a, a fairly dark animal, but it does have some lighter tones on its head and some lighter tones in its body, which I find very interesting. There is some some amount of variation in the control group, uh, but not as much, in my opinion. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, 
So I'm keeping, uh, I think, one pair of each from the cooler and from the warmer temps to see how they mature. So take a look at this one. The lighter tones on this one are, are pretty light, but a lot of the markings themselves tend to be fairly dark. So not sure exactly what's going on with this one. The head is really beautiful, very light colored. So this is actually one of the ones that I'm keeping back. Very interesting, very, very interesting. So, pop that one. I'm just gonna kinda do a quick run through here. I don't wanna take forever because there are close to 20 babies. So I don't want this to be a one hour long video. So let's see. Where's this one hanging out at? Right here. So this is a, another uh, fairly light one in comparison. Lots of light colors in the light background. Lighter patterning. The patterning itself is lighter colored on this one than on the last ones that we've looked at. So very interesting. Uh, it's something that I saw more in the experimental group, more in the group that I warmed things up. I noticed that than in the uh, control group per se. So I find that very, very interesting. I don't think, yeah, that one's going to somewhat already. Okay, so let's look at another one from the cool temp group. Only have a couple more from the cool temp group and then we will look at the experimental. So back to those dark, that dark base color on here. So in comparison to that last one, you can see much, much darker. The head is light, but overall the coloration is much darker on this animal, which I'm noticing is, is fairly standard for the animals incubated at, a, at that cooler temperature. Okay. Go. So three more from the cool group to look at, and then we'll check out the experimental group. These guys just cleaned. So again, really dark, kind of chocolatey tones in the back in here, and you could, but you can still see that there's some light tones that are going to come as this animal matures. But overall, a fairly dark colored snake compared to what I'm what I'm thinking I'm seeing elsewhere. So super dark chocolatey color. I'm curious to see how that translates as this animal starts to get its mature colors. Okay, here we go. Another one from the cool temp. So this one should have the chocolatey kind of dark top color. Really neat. Oops, sorry. But uh, chocolatey kind of tones, that's what I've just been kind of referring to it as, like the darker tones on top. Overall, a fairly dark colored body in comparison. So very interesting to me. Lots and lots of dark tones in the control group. So I'm curious if anyone else is... Uh, looking to experiment with incubation temps as far as snakes go. I would love to see what your results are to see how that plays out in your various species. So again, this is another one where uh, fairly dark chocolate kind of tones on the top. You can still see the contrast in the sides, but fairly dark tones on the top of the animal itself. Very, very interesting to me. There we go. So this is the last one of that control control group. Very cool. Very cool looking snakes. So going from those, let's take a look at the okay, on to the experimental group. So this is the animals that for the last 10 days or so of incubation, I bumped up the temperatures from 86 to 88, between 88 and 90. And this one has a little bit of the dark tones on top, but it looks like an overall lighter colored animal to me. Maybe I'm just trying to see what I'm trying to see, but a little bit of a lighter color to it, but still has some of those dark tones. So 
Let's take a look at a different one. Okay, so this one is one of the ones I plan on keeping. But take a look at the color on this one. It's like almost red in comparison to the other offspring that I have from this clutch. Lots and lots of light tones, much lighter overall than most of the other offspring. So I'm, I would lo I'm gonna love watching this one grow and see how it changes with all these unusual colors that it's got in comparison to some of the darker animals that are its siblings. So, stick this one back. And then we'll take a look at another one. So I'll look at another hold back here. So take a look at this one. Again, really super light overall coloration in comparison to the dark more chocolate tones on the other animals. It looks like the black is kind of reduced out in the dorsal area in the back patterning. Uh, not completely light, not like a hypo, still got a, some dark colors to it, but noticeably lighter than the control group. Hmm. So stick this one back. Another one that I'm very curious to see how it matures and how it changes as it grows. Uh, so this is one that I'm not planning on keeping back. But again, let me see if I can get it out here without getting bit. Come here. But again, super light compared to the chocolate tones of the control group. Oh, it's going to bite me. You look like you want to bite me. It's all very tense right now. It's upset. It's not happy. I just woke it up. But overall, a much lighter colored animal. A much lighter colored animal. Very unusual. So, okay. I'm going to try and get through the last three here. Yeah, camera's getting a little hot here. It's warm in this room. Okay, so another one from the experimental group. This one has a, a little bit of those chocolate tones, but still a lighter animal, in my opinion, than a lot of the animals in the control group. Hmm. So, Okay, two more. So this one's pretty cool. Again, a lot more red tones. Not as much dark chocolate kind of color in the back patterning. Very light colored animal in comparison to the control. This one, I definitely see a huge difference between this animal and those other animals that we looked at before. Super cool. Super, super cool. So last one that we're gonna look at is right here. Right in this group right here. And a fairly light colored animal. Still has some of those chocolate kind of tones on top. Not as light as the lightest animals in this group, but still a decent amount of color to it. So, very curious to see how these grow. I am going to be selling some of these uh, and kind of finding new homes for them, but I still would like to have follow-up with those people who end up purchasing these to see how they grow and how they mature. Because like I said, I'm, going to, I'm planning on keeping two or three from each group to see how they mature with me. But I'm still curious to see how the rest of them grow because they all are unique and different. So if you like this video, make sure that you give it a like, 
Leave a comment what you think, if you noticed any difference in these offspring or whether you think that I'm just seeing things. Uh, and let me know if you're thinking about maybe trying it yourself. I'm curious to see who else would be uh, willing to give this a try. I know that's not something that everyone's willing to do because they don't want to risk the potential of the offspring, something going wrong. But if you are curious like I am, I would love to see what your results yielded. So thank you guys for checking out this video. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.